host Anthony Lionheart Smith. I host MMA Today uh, with RJ Clifford on SiriusXM Fight Nation Channel 156. Uh, you can click the link in this description uh, to get your free trial. Today we uh, we welcome Diego Sanchez on the show. Uh, I believe that this was the uh, the first interview in a very long time that he did by himself, completely uninterrupted. Uh, and I and I think we got a clear view of of where Diego stands right now, where his where his mindset is, where his head is, and uh, and kind of how he views the situation uh, from his end. This uh this wasn't to to slander him. This wasn't to to look bad on the UFC. This wasn't to look bad on his coach, Joshua Fabia. Um, it, it was just a just a just a clear representation of of where he is. Um, and what you're about to see is the full unedited interview start to finish just like I promised Diego I would that we wouldn't clip it we wouldn't cut it we wouldn't censor him um this is his thoughts from where where he sees the world uh through his eyes welcome back MMA today I'm RJ Clifford he's Anthony Smith joining us now the original ultimate fighter winner Diego the nightmare slash the dream Sanchez how you doing Diego doing good doing good just um out here relaxing on the Apache land at uh, Inn of the Mountain Gods, Mescalero, just um, taking a break, at, you know, taking a break from all the craziness because it's been a lot, you know, it's been a lot. I put in one of the, the most disciplined training camps, 100 days, just uh, put a lot of work in for this, this fight and then for it to fall off and now um, the backlash from the media and all the negativity towards uh, my coach and my mentor. Um, it's, it's been a, it's been a rough, um, a rough couple weeks. So yeah, man, I've been heartbroken, you know, and it's been, it's been a rough time, but I'm out here in, um, you know, in nature on the sovereign land feeling safe today. So it's a, it's a good day. Nature will get your head right. No matter what's going on in your life, the, uh, Beautiful American land will take care of that. So uh, just to set the table real quick, um, you're supposed to fight your old teammate, Donald Cerrone, this Saturday. Uh, the fight fell through. Um, there's been back and forth between Hunter Campbell of the UFC and your, and your trainer, Joshua Fabia. Uh, you've now been released from the UFC. You, you sounded excited over uh, social media about the potential of fighting somewhere else. It, it really has been a whirlwind for you the last two weeks. Like what, What's happened over the last two weeks that that kind of caused this this whirlwind? Well, first of all, you know, I just want to want to start at the beginning of the story because it is a story of stories and it needs to be told from the start a little bit. I don't know how much time I have with you guys, but I do. I would like to start from the start of the story where so you guys can get a better idea of, of uh, where I was at and where this story started because it was it was back in uh, 2019 uh, two years ago I was 37 years old and I was coming to what you know the majority of of the masses would say the end of my career my you know my my performances were falling falling behind I had been knocked out a couple times uh, the Iaquenta the Matt Brown and I was um, you know surging you know, with, with the victory and, and, um, I had to fight coming up with Mickey Gall, you know, a 26 year old, um, young, young, young gunner. Yeah. And, um, at this point I, you know, I had already, already spent 15 years in the UFC, you know, I had been chewed up and honestly, I was about to be spit out. Um, they were feeding me, um, feeding me young fighters. Every fighter that I was fighting was a young fighter. The guy I fought before Mickey Gall was also 26 years old and, and bigger, taller, longer. Um, so, you know, there's the, the Craig White. You know, and so, yeah, there's, there, there's a lot going on in my life at this time. And um, not only that, I, um, I was going through a divorce. You know, I had been living this MMA life for a long time. And um, yeah, I, it, it's hard. And it's rough. And, um, I pushed, I pushed my ex-wife away because she was pushing me towards retirement and she didn't want to see me get hurt. And, um, you know, I, I took it as, you know, you're giving up on me. You don't believe in me. And we went our separate ways. So I was in a real, real rocky road. And, um, this is when, 
you know, and then with with Jackson Wink and what was going on with Jackson Wink and and I was, you know, I was I was in a rocky road and I was pretty much getting um, there was not much attention to me at Jackson Wink. I was basically just training myself. And and this also was uh, very disheartening for me because I knew I was at the, I knew I was coming to the end mm-hmm. and uh, coming to the end and not having support from your wife and not having support from your team, you could see where I was at, you know, coming off a victory, going into another fight with another young 26 year old, uh, the old dog, the old junkyard dog I was. And, uh, you know, everybody's seen the, the wars and the fights that I've been in the blood that I've spilled for, for the UFC, the promotion, the company, um, the hits that I've taken, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. And, um, it was in this time when, um, you know, I was, you know, just trying to keep my focus on surviving, you know, surviving a divorce and surviving financially surviving a divorce and, uh, emotionally surviving a divorce and, and, and trying to keep focus on how I could, could um, be victorious in, 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 in life and in the UFC. And, and the only thing that I knew was fighting because this is what I committed myself to since I was 20 years old. Like I, my full adult life, this is the pattern and the cycles that I've been living is just, you know, one fight, take a fight, you know, get, get straight, be clean and, uh, sober and then get then you win the fight you know you're you know you're back to the patterns of ups and downs and and um you know i i went through my 20s and partied and and into my 30s and grew up a lot and and, uh just the patterns of 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 this um career that i chose this path that i chose um you know to fight for um finance to fight for fame to fight for these uh, chemicals that were released in my brain, you know, the dopamine, the adrenaline, the, the, these, these chemicals that are released in your brain when, when when you're in the fight and you're hearing, Diego, 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 you got a whole arena calling your name. You got all this energy. Then at the end, you got the refs holding your hand up and you get the victory. This, um, this feeling and uh, this feeling that you get in these chemicals that are released in your brain, it it cannot be duplicated or replicated in any form. This is the true UFC drug. When you get this UFC drug, trust me, it's the best thing you ever felt in your life. And that's all you want to get is back in there to get that feeling again. And so this is what, what led me to many struggles with addiction also because outside of training camp after you get that huge 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 flow of these chemicals man you're trying to do anything to get a head change you're doing anything to you know everybody's different you know some people drink some people go into hard drugs some people go into uh pharmaceuticals some you know there's many many different side effects from 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 this career path and and um you know some people deal with it better than others some people are more educated than others. Some people have better support systems than others. Some people have good families. Some people come from, you know, poor, poor Albuquerque, New Mexico, where you're ill-educated, you know, Latino, you know, just trying to survive. And, and you see a sport come from, come from nothing, come from nowhere and give you an opportunity to be something. And for me being, you know, um, it wasn't going to get much better than you Yes. You know, so for me to have an opportunity to make a name for myself and become something what the people and would say would be great or like the people call me legend, you know, and and uh, for me to have this opportunity. Well, mm, OK, maybe I'll sacrifice. Um, maybe I'll sacrifice my my face. Maybe I'll sacrifice my eye like Michael Bisping. You know, maybe I'll sacrifice my knees, my neck. Maybe I'll sacrifice my health. You know, maybe I'll sacrifice my brain like Spencer Fisher. You know, these are the things that come with this sport, but it's not talked about. And 
because all the fighters, you know, they want to get that next payday because all the coaches want to be in the UFC because they want to be in the corner on the camera. They want to have their little moment. And like you guys, you guys want to have your job. You guys want to have your hobby of talking fights and, and you're a part of the MMA media. Well, you know, if, if, if 100% transparency of the UFC truth came out, mm, well, maybe the people and the masses of, of fans out there might just be like, hey, maybe I don't want my, my daughter doing this. Maybe I don't want my daughter looking like Ioana with a massive uh, trauma to the head where you got swelling of the brain. You know, maybe I don't want my, 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 my son's nose looking like Mike Perry. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of questions that you've got to ask. And so for me, you know, here I am, you know, about to be chewed up and spit out by the UFC. And this is when Joshua Fabia came into my life. And the, I, was, I was blown away. And first of all, I just want to apologize to Joshua, first and foremost, because I, I got excited. And when I met him, um, I was blown away. I was blown away by his martial arts skill set. And how somebody that is five, five to 130 pounds soaking wet could in our first initial meeting play with me and submit me within a minute. And I'm this legendary fighter. I was blown away. All right. And so like, I'm a young, I'm a young kid living my dream of, of finding a little Asian trainer, like, like blood sport, you know, like kickboxer, like kickboxer, you know, you got the little trainer that's badass. I was living that dream. I was like, Whoa, man, I, I think I found, I think I found something special because this is impossible. And he, what he did to me was impossible for, you know, real professional athletes to do to me more or less. Like, come on, man. I went to Abu Dhabi. I rolled with Marcelo Garcia, Jacare. I've been with the best of the best. No one's tapped me out in, you know, 40 seconds. You know, so I was um, I was blown away and um, I want to say sorry because at the media scrum for my fight with Michael Chiesa, I believe it was UFC 236. I don't I'm not, you know, I've been in so many. I don't remember. 239. Yeah. 239. Yeah. 239. That's the dyslexia. Six. <laughs> Six but, that, I got but um, anyway, um, I was so I was I was I was. um. I was taught and I was groomed to sell, to sell myself and to sell the show, to be an entertainer. So when I went to this media scrum and, and I made the decision that, um, man, fuck, fuck Jacksons, fuck these motherfuckers. They, they don't care about me. They don't give me no attention. They don't care. They don't want to even have a dinner with me, you know, to, to, to talk about, about what we're going to do, how we're going to plan this last fight. My last fight on my UFC contract, man, this was the Michael Chiesa fight. And I was finally going to fight out my UFC contract and not, not sign up for five more fights like I always did. And so I, um, man, I, I sold it and then I got excited. And when I was out there, I, I spoke big on, on Joshua. I spoke so big on him that the world would have to go against it because it's like, nah, nah, it's impossible. Diego's that shit crazy. And um, that's, you know, what I've been dealing with since then, since that moment, you know, the media and everybody has came against Joshua and said that, you know, he's, he's a scam and, and he's, he's con this is the one that gets me. This is the one that gets me. So eye to eye, I'm looking at you guys eye to eye. If I was conned, I would tell you. And if I had a magic, say, if a magic spell was put on me, and I don't know, man, a magic spell to be conned and go with this guy. Well, I just want to tell you guys a little truth about my dear friend, Joshua Fabia. Um, he worked with me 10 days, only 10 days, 
10 days before the Mickey Gall fight, all right? Came to my house every night after I had trained all day at Jackson's. Came to my house every night and would work on me with um, techniques and and movement and and just so many other elements that um, to combat that I had never focused on or worked on, and um, it it it, it uh, created great benefits for me. I had I had results right away within ten days. I had results like that. I went out there and I had the best performance of my career within 10 years. You know, I, I, I hadn't finished nobody in a long time. And I went in there with, with, with Mickey and I, I did what Joshua taught me. And it was like, a, you know, it was like a dream out there. I, I was, I was, I, you know, Mickey couldn't hit me with, with anything. And, and I was seeing everything coming due to the, the visual training that Joshua had put me through um, due to, due to the positions and the stances of the martial arts skill set that I was being taught to how my body and my form were wrong before. I was just a, I was just a take five hits to get two. You know, like this is what the fans love. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'll take a hit. I'll get bloody. I'll sacrifice myself. And then I had this guy come in and no, that's, that's not, that's not the way a real true martial artist works because a true martial artist is going to, if something, if, so martial arts, right. goes back to weapons, right. Martial, martial means life or death, you know? And so a true martial artist, if something's coming at him, that's going to kill him you move the fuck out of the way. And so this is a lot to do with, with what Fabia has trained me with weapons and knives so is, is, is it applies to, to, to martial arts with no weapons or knives, because you have to learn how to get out of the way. You have to learn how to move and movement is your first defense and your first offense. And if, so if, like, I, if, I could, if I could, if I could cut you off, I, come, I, on, I, yeah, I, come on. Yeah. Please. Go ahead. I, I, uh, I, I, I fully believe you when you say that you believe in Joshua Fabia, Fabia and that he's been a, a positive influence on you, et cetera. I guess my biggest issue, I think what most fans biggest issue is it seems like Fabia has been making it about him. Like when that video came out that you posted of the, the fighter meeting and um, they did the interview with you and then Fabia comes up and says, Hey, you guys need to pay 10, blah, blah. Like you had a fight coming up in two days and he's making it a point to make it about him and his Google results. I think that is more what is bothering people about how Fabio and you interact and, and where he's taken. But uh, let, me, let, me, let me correct you on that because uh, first and foremost, uh, he's, 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 he's not. He's not. He wasn't making it about himself. That's complete bullshit because the truth of it is he was confronting the media team. I mean, the, the, the commentating team because of the fight, the, previous fight before that how um daniel cormier was was you know coming at me before the fight was even over i wasn't you know i didn't really truly take a hit they're acting like i was fi getting finished in there my face was not not even bruised i wasn't even bruised after the first round i wasn't even bloodied i wasn't hurt i wasn't injured i wasn't i was in the, you know, i was still in the fight i might have been working on defensive skills because yeah i was fighting a monster that was bigger, faster, and stronger than me. Yeah, I was, I was, I was doing my best in there. And then we got, um, what's his name? Um, we got, um, got the other guy, the other announcer that's never even been in there. And he's just a coach. And he's, he's saying how this is strange. This is strange. I've never seen Diego like this. And I know Diego. And, and so like just the narrative. And, and if you guys don't are unaware that there is a narrative in the UFC, an entertainment monopoly billionaire company. You don't think that there's a freaking narrative? There's a narrative and it's being oh, pushed. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. No, let me just give me a second. Let me tell you. There is a narrative and it is being pushed. And yeah, the masses is not uh, not aware of this. The masses is not you. You might not even be aware of this. And a lot of people are not aware of this. But yes, there is a, there is a narrative and there is a Wizard of Oz that has a bunch of puppets by the strings and he's pulling these strings he's pulling these strings and and you too anthony you might not be aware of it either you know I, I i've been with the company for 17 years i think you're coming up on 10 
Uh, eight, eight, I think. Eight. See, you're, yeah. you're, you, you know, you're, you're at half. So I remember when I was at eight. I, I you know, I remember when I was at, at, at fourteen years of the company. I still was very unaware of what was coming on. It wasn't until. Well, 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 look, Diego. I mean, you've got like Daniel Cormier is a Hall of Famer, two division champion, two time Olympian. His opinion, I think matters right and his job is to say what he sees and he could yeah, be wrong no, no, and, and you can and correct. you can disagree but but he it's his job to say what he sees same with trevor whitman it's his yeah, job you, 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 you should you should say what you see and not try to be a comedian like joe rogan and see that's where daniel cormier got confused his his the one who's mentoring him in, in being a commentator is joe rogan this guy who's a comedian who likes to put a funny spin, a funny twist on everything. Let's make it funny. <laughs> or, ooh, and you say, oh, you know, come on. Like, you know, we know, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, man. And the truth of it is that, man, I've been roasted. Joshua has been roasted. And the truth is this guy came in from the outside industry. He didn't want nothing to do with MMA. I asked him to help me. And not only did he help me with my martial arts skill sets, he helped me with my life, man, because I was fucking up. I was fucking up in a lot of ways. And due to this erratic, unhealthy, unnatural pattern that I've been living for 15 years with the UFC, ups and downs and ups and roller coaster rides, ain't no one know the truth about me. My, my truth has been so secretive, so hidden, just like the truth of UFC. So secretive, so hidden in the dark. And when you bring light on something, like I'm bringing light on myself. I'm I'll roast myself right now. Yeah, I've struggled with addiction problems my whole career, from the the, the from the beginning on the Ultimate Fighter. You see me drinking. Obviously, alcohol ain't good for me, man. Maybe it's that native blood in me. I don't know, but um, I, I I've been struggling, man. And the truth is, a lot of fighters deal with this, man. And you get sucked into this life of UFC. And you don't have another life because you don't have very many options, man. Some of these guys are smart and they got their degrees before they were fighters. That's like maybe one out of one out of 50, man. When you're a fighter, you take this option because it's you feel like it's what you got, man. It's all that you got a lot of the times. And you got guys like like Mike Perry and Tony Ferguson. You know, I see uh, Nick Diaz. There's there's so many out there. And then there's so many of the past who who want to hold on to their ego and want to hold on to the glorified moments of their mixed martial arts career so that they can hold their head high and stand tall when they are done with this sport. And the truth of it is, is they're all fucked up. We're all in denial. We're all delusional. And we're all trying to hold on to that. I may be one of the first fighters to step outside the box. And be like, you know what? I want to speak my truth to the youth because no one spoke to me any truth about this sport. I didn't know it was in the developing stages. I didn't know that this is what's going to happen to me. I just got addicted to the take up, take up, take up. I got addicted to it. And before you know it, there's no looking back. I'm, I'm stuck in this game. I'm stuck here. I'm, this is my life now. And, oh, that gold shiny belt. Ooh, that gold shiny belt. You believe you're going to get it. You believe it. You believe it. It's sold to you so hard that you believe you're going to get that shiny belt. You believe, oh, man, no matter what, I'll, I'll, I'll go to, I'll do any weight class. I'll do anything. I'm destined. I'm blessed by God. And this is my destiny. And I'm not the only person. I see all these other fighters out there too. Like, you know, it's like, it's the same thing. It, it's, it's a, uh, it's a sell. You're sold on, on this dream. That's, you know, that you're going to that you're going to be the UFC champion. But the truth and the reality is you got the puppeteer pulling strings. They put who they want there. They, they, they mold this, this illusion. They mold this illusion. And the illusion is, it's all about money, man. You, you and, and and I see all these fighters. Listen, let me say, let me say something. I see all these fighters out there, like myself in my young 20s and 30s, you know, getting on my knees, making the sign of the cross, and saying, Oh God, Lord Jesus Christ, 
help me get this victory. And then when I get the victory, oh, thank you, God. Let me give you the glory. I was victorious in breaking another man's orbital. I crushed his face. What a great act of God. Oh, poor Brian Gassaway. Yeah, he had to go to the hospital. I just I just completely crushed his skull with with ground and pound elbows. And I'm I'm in the I'm in the cage thanking God, like, oh I'm doing this for you, Jesus. Well, I'm doing well, I this think, for I you, think Diego, God. I think the fans have a better understanding that than you give them credit for. I, I think they're they're starting more and more to understand the physical risks and like what you guys put yourselves through which is why I think why so many fans are concerned about you because whether they're right or wrong, they're looking at Joshua Bobby as a guy that's kind of leeching off you. And because they love you so much, they're worried that he's taking you down the wrong path to end their career. Wait, that's wait, hold on. Hold on, I've kind of well, hold, hold on a second. I think I I've had problems with the commentary team. Um, I've, I've had to come at Daniel Cormier. I've come at Michael Bisming before I've come at Paul Felder. I've come at John Anik. Um, I think where the issue was it like I came in the, I came at them in those private situations, one-on-one here's my, here's my fucking problem. Um, and I'm upset about it. And they, and honestly, they were pretty receptive. They were pretty receptive to it. Um, and they understood how I felt. I think that once you videotape it though, and then you put it out there, my, my only question, and honestly, it's the only question I would have for, for Joshua was if everything went perfect, what was the what was the end goal there? Because what I seen what was a, a, a sad hurt Diego, which I think is what they seen. Like, oh shit, I guess we didn't realize that's how it was coming off to Diego. But then I I, I think on the flip side, then they felt attacked. So it was kind of like they went from being holy shit, maybe we hurt Diego's feelings, to and then Joshua maybe coming at them a little bit. And then and then that sadness switched oh, ambush. To, that that sw- that that sadness or that that caring that like maybe we fucked up turn to well go fuck yourself because now i'm now you're coming at me so i that's kind of what i've seen there is there any do you think that there's anywhere anywhere that maybe it could have gone better you know what i mean like the the phone calls in the in the video that's the only thing that from what i see that was the issue let me let me let me tell you let me tell you okay so with that confrontation before my fight out at abu dhabi with the matthews the objective and the task that Fabia had in confronting the team, it was achieved. They, that was one of some of the best commentary that they did on me. That, that, because see, that's, the, where, that's where because, I was because, going. Because, because he confronted them and, and he brought awareness to the narrative, because he brought awareness to what happened in my previous fight. And because we have a little camera rolling, that's called insurance motherfuckers we've been getting insurance this whole last two years we've been filming everything why no i think because we're trying to get rich and make a documentary we've been filming everything for insurance to protect our own asses man because you guys think that this shit is just a clean cut all moral integrity and honor and loyalty and respect as real as it gets company but that's not the truth man I'm outside this. I'm outside this company now. And to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you guys both frankly right now. I'm fearful, man. I'm fearful. I'm fearful for my motherfucking life. I feel fearful that this company, this billion dollar monopoly company worldwide is going to come after me. Something might happen to me in two years, maybe in a couple of years, maybe something happened. I made my truck fall. Maybe I wrecked my truck. Maybe something happened. Maybe I, 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 oh, Diego overdose on some suicide shit. I don't know, but I would not put anything past the level of evil that is within this corporation. What, why and would they do so, that to you? Why would they do would that they, to me? Because why would they try to they, off you? Well, because because if I was to expose some of the stuff that I know about, that because I'm been in this motherfucker longer than anybody else. And been the only one that, that survived the bitch that went through the fucking dark tunnel and came out the other side. You know, like, I'm still here. I'm still able to speak to you guys. Thank God for that. And that's also due to Joshua Fabia helping me. He, he mentored me and coached me in speech. He mentored me and coached me in father, how to be a better father. How to so many other things. It's not, and, and no, we're not gay. 
And that the Ariel Hawani pushed that narrative. That was a part of Ariel's narrative. Put the little picture up and 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 the brazers and no, we're not gay. He's been the best friend that came into my life, helped me get my shit together because he's seen a man who was so traumatized emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, in, in so many ways that uh, that people don't understand. And yeah, I've kept it in the dark for my ego, for my glorification so that i could be this great man and the truth of it is man it's just it, it isn't what nothing is what you think it is not my career not my life not ufc and what's going on but in the end yeah i didn't get my fucking final fight i didn't get my retirement fight with another legend i was ready i was prepared I put in 100 days of training camp. I did everything disciplined. I didn't have a drink. I didn't have a smoke. I, I, I was ready to step in there and put it all on the line. Why? So that I could speak my truths and be heard, not silenced. Like they're trying to silence me and Joshua with the narrative, with the push, with the power for YouTube, Google, Instagram. You don't think UFC's in the pockets of Instagram? You remember going to the athlete retreat center when we first talked? Yeah, they pushed us. They pushed Instagram on us before when Instagram was still real. Before that, you always used to get the before you used to get the messages. Used to get the mess. Now you now we get the messages. Oh, um, we'll we'll give you two. We'll give you twenty thousand followers for five grand. You know, I know you guys. I know Anthony's got the messages. Oh. But how do they do this? It's because they got fake profiles, and and they're in control of these fake profiles. So you could do whatever you want. And, and, and now, now that it's gotten so big, it's a paid system. And so, yeah, me exposing that, yeah, that's not good. Not good for me, you know? So, but the truth of it is, I know a lot. And awareness, uh, the awareness, bringing awareness to stuff, it, it's heavy and it's deep. But now I get to speak my truth, man. I didn't get that fight, but I'm in another fight. I'm in another well, fight. Well, speaking I'm, of I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a fight. For, I'm in a fight for the fighters and everybody out there who is going against Joshua. Shame on you. Shame on you. You're a little sheep. You're get, you're following the narrative. You're you're believing what these fake little bot robot fake accounts are putting up. Oh, oh, con, con, con. All oh, this strange, strange, strange. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go on there right now. You go look at the shit. And you will see these fake accounts while well, they're, they're starting to change now. They're starting to take them off. But thank God that um, I got a smart coach. He, we've been we've been documenting this shit. We've been documenting all of this. So just, so, just, so, just, so, just so I'm clear, Diego, Diego you, you think Instagram is making fake bot accounts to bring down your coach? I don't. Joshua. I, I don't think I know. This is a fact, bro. How do you think that you they can give you 20,000? How do you think they could give you a million followers? All you need to do is have a little money. That's it. You see all these people out there. They ain't real celebrities. There's a bunch of people out there. They ain't real celebrities. But hey, you could, you could, you could live in the illusion and pretend you're a, 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 a celebrity. Oh, you got a hundred followers. You got a hundred thousand followers. Oh, but you just a regular average Joe, but you got a hundred thousand followers because you paid for those hundred thousand followers. This, this is not bullshit, man. And no, no, no. I know, I know that's a thing. I know you can buy fake followers, yeah, but I'm just curious yeah, why, so why I don't think you so I'm you, just curious why you think you, Instagram has it out. But you, you could buy a hundred thousand followers and you think it's that that, that they can't develop a, a computer system to where they're gonna put fake comments, whatever they want, on whatever they want. And I have people messaging me saying, I'm trying to put positive comments on this. But they, they will only allow negative. This shit is real, man. This is the real Revenge of the Nerds computer shit, man. It's 2021. And this shit is going down. It is real. Diego, I, just, um, I, 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 only got, uh, I only got a couple things, man. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. Of course. Of course. Um, it, do you think it, it would be fair? Like, uh, listen, we talked earlier today. I told you that I'm, I'm not here to... To, to set a trap or ambush you, man. I'm just asking questions and, and giving you a platform. I've let, we've, I, I, appreciate you, Anthony, I appreciate the transparency, man. Yeah, I appreciate been, you being a real man, dude. And, 100%, and man. I'm, I'm just come, like, you know, I, you know, I got, I got a lot of love for you, bro. I, yeah. I, I'm not here to ambush Diego Sanchez. I uh, see you. I see you. Do you think that it's fair 
or, or, or I guess, would you be okay? Like, is it possible to be a Diego Sanchez fan, but also disagree with maybe some of the ways that Joshua does sometimes rub people the wrong way. That's very clear. Can, can you be a fan of Diego Sanchez and not necessarily agree or be a fan of Joshua Fabia? Is it like, can, is it okay for, are you okay with people separating that? Cause I think that that's what's happening. Cause I don't see any Diego Sanchez hate. I don't know anybody that doesn't like Diego Sanchez. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to watch Diego Sanchez fight. I'm not sure that those people exist to be very honest with you. That's how loved you are in our community. But I do see a lot of disagreement and, and negative stuff towards Joshua, I guess in the way I see it, I think that it's okay to have those two things separate. Um, and, and I think that that's where the problem comes for you. Cause I, I, I see the, I see the pain and I can hear it in your voice that this isn't how you wanted it to end, but I don't think that it's all towards you. Like, do you think that's a fair assessment? Do you see that it's definitely separated? I see that it's separated and I, I believe that everybody is entitled to their opinion, but I know that this is not the true opinions of the people because it's been pushed on a narrative and people don't even understand what they're thinking. They just, they see 20, 30 comments and they say, oh, that must, that must be what it is. And I don't know. I don't know this. I don't know that. And yeah, Joshua's came up, uh, came up. They, he's been, um, they've, He's, he comes up negative to people. He comes up like people don't like him because he's saying shit that people don't want to hear. That that could go with anything. That could go with anybody. If someone was saying shit you don't want to hear, you don't want to believe, yeah, you, you you're not gonna you're not gonna like him. You're gonna fucking hate him. And what some of the shit that he might bring awareness and light to could seriously change and affect a monopoly billion 10 billion dollar organization worldwide come on man you guys you guys don't you guys don't get it man all you people don't get it and i'm gonna tell you guys right now i'm gonna tell everybody i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna say this to dana white dana what's up dana what's up dana man i tried for two years to get a meeting with you oh shit i, I was the first ultimate fighter I mean, I mean, didn't that show do something for the company when it was 60 million dollars in debt Oh, oh, all those fight on the nights. Oh, all that TV time, Spike TV, Fox TV, all the all ESPN, all of them. And and you can't meet with your boy. And I'm there in Vegas training. I'm going to Vegas and I'm training there. Weeks on weeks on weeks. I've put 60 to 70 hours in the UFC PI just to try to get a meeting with you, Dana. Just to try to meet you in crossing. But you won't meet with me because you don't want to hear what I have to say. You don't want to talk to me. You don't want to talk to my bat shit crazy manager. Why? Because he might bring some light. He might bring some awareness to what you're hiding in the dark. Well, I'm still open to meet with you, Dana. Be a fucking man. Be a real fucking boss. When I've bled, I've sweat, I fucking cried. I fucking cried for this fucking company. I fucking sacrificed more than you will ever know. And you can't fucking have a 45 minutes to meet with it. Oh, but you'll meet with Clay Guida. You'll meet with Clay Guida and you'll post that shit up. But little, little brown boy from New Mexico who was supposed to be knocked the fuck out on the Ultimate Fighter, that you have to switch the agenda and make me fight my own teammate, Josh Koscheck. You have to flip the fucking narrative because I'm fucking it up because I'm I'm in there and I'm I'm winning fights I'm not supposed to win and I've done this my whole career I was supposed to be shoot chewed up swallowed and shit out a long fucking time ago and I believe me I fucked up a lot of bets I fucked up a lot of bets there's a lot of money and and and, and everybody knows Dana got a betting problem oh oh you know I, I saw I saw they posted oh he always wins on the blackjack table. That, that the palms had to had to kick him out because um, he wins so much. Well, I know you ain't winning on everything. And I know you got a gambling problem. And this shit does get deep. So if you want to meet Dana, I'm just saying, be a fucking man. Find me out. Put, 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 me, put, me, put, put me in an Airbnb. Like you put Michael Kessa in an Airbnb before, before he fought me. You know, why don't you fucking take care of the fucking real OG for once? 
you know, like, Diego, Diego, we, we, we've, we've pushed back like three commercial breaks. <laughs> we, we are so far ahead. We could talk to you for hours, uh, but we got to pay the bills and we only have so much time. Um, I, I speak for everyone in MMA. We genuinely want what's best for you. We genuinely want your career to end the way you want and for you to be happy. Um, okay, so do I, so do I, let me end, let me end, let me end on something that I need to get quickly, out of off my chest. Quickly, all right. Quickly. So if you might've heard the conversation with Hunter Campbell and Joshua, you, if you did hear that conversation, Hunter says, Oh, if, 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 if Diego has any problems with his health, Oh, we'll, 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 we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll, we'll fucking put the silver platter out for him and we'll, we'll do this. We'll do that. We'll take care of him. Yeah. Well, you know what? Just like Spencer Fisher, you know, he ain't replying to Spencer's texts now. I know Spencer. He's a good fucking friend of mine. I spent a week of my training camp out there to serve him and his fucking family to help him. To, I was going to have him in the corner for my fight to give this man a moment because he didn't never had a moment of closure. And now he's struggling with dementia. And I was going to do this for him out of love for him out of love for the other fighters. And this is all me and Joshua have been doing. We're coming to, we've been fighting for the fighters. And now my fight is not with UFC. And I'm telling you this in the, in, in the, in the video, in, in the talk, Hunter says that they'll take care of my, that they're going to take care of some medicals for me. Well, you know what? I don't trust the fucking UFC. I don't trust the Cleveland Institute, the Cleveland clinic in Vegas. I don't trust them. They're under the paycheck of Dana White and the UFC and the monopoly company. So I told him, I, I had my lawyer tell him, I had my lawyer tell him, when, when Sean Shelby unprofessionally hits me up in a text message and says, Diego, um, you, need, you need to check your email. It's extremely important. If you don't respond to Hunter's email by the morning, we're going to pull your fight. We're going to cancel your fight, your retirement fight after we know you've put in all this work and you've sacrificed your life for this shit. Hey, we, Diego, we, we, are, we, we are so far up against our commercial breaks. Um, let's well, you I got to go. Well, we you got to go. You want to, you want me to finish after the commercial break? Well, well, well no, we, we, we have like four of them. We got to get to, let's get okay. you on another time. All right. Like well, let me tell you, man, like let me that. tell you, let's, let's, let me tell you, I've requested, gotta, I've re no, let me tell you, I've requested medicals. I've requested to get some CT scans that were mine after I fucking took the fucking blow from from BJ Penn after I I fought Martin Catman Gilbert Melendez I, I all these Diego, listen no 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 commercials are going to come whether we shit. like it or and not you're ain't giving, giving me shit off. I don't want to and do the that truth stuff. of it is the truth right. hurts this is MMA today. when you're we'll living a motherfucking lie that's the truth right there.